Hey, hello, I'm Julie Jo. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. If you're not new here, welcome back. Yes, 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 yes. We will be looking at a little bit more of the Columbia trip today, but I think it's important because this is like a huge, huge issue and moment for people who are anti multi level marketing and for people who aren't because they're actually seeing the issues. They're seeing that this is a cult. Do I think all MLMs are cults? No, I don't. Do I think there's a lot of culty things that go on? Yeah. Do I think they can easily become one? Absolutely. And that's what I think Jessie Lee Ward has done with her group, I don't know, called The Empire, and especially these top like 15 or 16 people that she has brought. So I'm going to watch a video of someone that we have talked about on this channel. It's been a hot minute though. Her name is hashtag BA Boss Babe. You uh, might know her as Brittany though. That's just her first name. It is my belief and my opinion that this is a perfect example of what it looks like to run a cult and to be a part of a cult. We're going to see a lot of, which we have seen a lot of cognitive dissonance, a lot of, we're going to see, well, we have seen a lot of cognitive dissonance. And I want to say while it is sad, absolutely. While it is difficult to watch, um, these, especially for these 15 people, specifically the women part of it, while they are victims, absolutely, of, I, in my opinion, they are victims of Jesse Lee Ward and her abuse. Therefore, pushing the mentality that they are going to essentially do the same thing to their downline as Jesse has done to them, that's the vibe I get. You let me know what you think below. We're going to react to someone today named hashtag BA Boss Babe, also known as Brittany Anderson, that's her on, that's her name on social media all over the place. And I have had her on my channel before, just a little bit. I think three, two, three videos, and it's been a long time since we've talked. But this video is like the video in between the the night where they not went on the hike yet, or walk or hike, I don't know, they say both. The where they got blindfolded and had to take their shoes off and walk back to their house that they were staying in. There was one person for each person who was guiding them back. In this blindfold walk back scenario with no shoes, there was one person for each person that was walking. They had to communicate with this person. Not only are they blindfolded, they had to t remove their shoes, walk on the roads, home. This is between those nights. So this is after the blindfold walk home with no shoes and before the i'm gonna trick them to hike two hours but when we're actually hiking 10 miles in the direct heat on the side of a colombian road that's yeah that and i say colombian because that's like very near the equator right so they're walking practically on the equator into the sun on the side of a road that's what they're doing and they were not prepared what's so funny is jesse lee she's been going they were prepared they were this no jesse it's it's in the video you told us how it went and my thing is, I don't actually think she was lying. I think that Jessie Lee would rather people think that her original video was a lie, right? Just, she called it storytelling, right? Exaggerations. I think she'd rather them think that, uh, that she was a liar, even though she's saying we're the ones lying, but it's in her, it's in her video that she said, than them actually know the truth, which is what she said in that video. We have had videos of people in her downline correlate with what she said in that video. And again, that was a part of the live we did recently, and we're gonna do more later on. So today we're going to be looking at Britney, and we're gonna be reacting. I have not watched it, I'm blind reacting, so leave your commentary below, go follow my social medias if you want, it's in the description, everything you might have questions on is in the description. Let's get started. I don't care about you and him I don't care about what has been I only care about your soft skin Cause we're still sleeping in my head I don't care about you and him I don't care about what has been I only care about your soft skin Cause we're still sleeping in my head Hello, hello, hello! My beautiful humans, what's up, what's happening? How's everybody doing today? Happy, is it Wednesday? Wednesday? Happy hump day, everybody from Colombia. Super excited to be here with y'all today. I have about 10 minutes that I can go live and kind of share my experience with you guys from last night, y'all. This, ex I want to be honest, it's not 10, it's 20. She said 10, but it goes for 20 minutes. So, buckle up, pals, grab a drink, grab a snack. Experience has been absolutely incredible and it's been like nothing I have ever experienced before. So, I am so excited to share this with you guys and to really just. <sighs> challenge you guys to take your power within your hold 
challenge the way that you talk to yourself, just challenge so many things. So I'm gonna share this story with you guys because I think it's what's funny, and I know I'm, I keep stopping it super quickly, I'm gonna try not to do that, but I think there's a lot of steps that's coming up. I have a feeling that like this video is big. I know that DC reacted to it, so if you wanna see someone else react to it as well, you can go watch it, DC's channel. She talks about power within her, and I think, you know, she's trying to t say to like, get, catch your power, you know, take hold of your power, be powerful, blah, 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 because Jesse Lee tries to push that on them all the time. If you want to like really hone in on your power and how powerful you are, which we all are, that sounds corny, but it's true. I think that what would give her the most power in this situation is if she woke up to what was happening, right? Is if she took a step back and realized how powerful she is and how she doesn't need Jesse and how none of these women and even men, even you, Sasha, blah, 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 don't need Jesse. They don't. And Jesse's going to make them think that they do. No, I have a bone to pick with Jesse and Sasha and I don't know who the other guy is, but they like started this new like uh, business thing for their downline. Sasha's direct to Jesse, I think, or something like that. And in that, all of these people have to sign up to be a part of it. I forgot what it's called. I'm sure some of you will know what it's called and put it down below. So all of these people, if they want to stay connected to Jesse, they don't just get to join Prove It and, and be in her downline. They have to pay to be a part of this. Like It's like a communication thing where they have all the, all the stuff that they need essentially need like uh, scripts and trainings and all of that they have to jump into that and pay monthly for that guess who gets the money I'll let you I'll let you guess below who gets the money for that this is so incredible so for those of you guys that do not know I am in Cartagena Colombia uh, until Friday and we are here for an earned leadership retreat but this one is different because it's all about growth and stretching and mindset and perspective and focus and vision casting and just so many different areas of growth 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 okay so as you guys are hopping on if you can drop me a hey hello how are you in the comments if you guys are here if you're catching the replay go and drop below a hashtag replay if you are new welcome to my broadcast my name is Brittany Anderson. Y'all can also call me hashtag BA Boss Babe. And I help moms build six and seven figure businesses utilizing social media in order to become and live debt free. And I guess maybe I should add travel the world as well onto that list as I have been doing a lot of that in the last five years. Brittany, I have a question. How many moms have you helped reach six and seven figure businesses? Can you say that if you haven't helped any or if you've helped only like a couple? interesting and i think it's funny i think it's also important that we look at the statistics of their downline right how many of them are actually making profit not just an uh, an income of some kind but profiting and how many of them are having this six seven figure business that she says she's teaching people to do okay but i want to talk to you guys about the experience that we had last night so Throughout this entire trip, we're doing all of these adventures and all of these experiences with very minimal information. So today, uh, they told us we need to wear uh, sports clothes, uh, shoes. Very minimal information, red flag, right? Um, I would love to, I would love to see how many red flags that y'all see as we go through this video so far. I mean, let's start count from here, right? One. I'll just start with one. You let me know how many you count throughout the video. And what's the worst one? <laughs> I mean, imagine going, you know, we're here at this retreat without like any information as to what's going on. When you go to a retreat, you get a schedule. You get a schedule, especially if it's a business retreat. Now, if it's a cult, right, your leader would prefer you not to know what's going on, would prefer you not to have an idea because they want complete control. And I don't know. That sounds like someone that we know, huh? That we are comfortable with hiking in and two liters of water. And then of course, sunscreen and bug spray. That's literally all the details we have. And I know we're not gonna be back until after dark because I have listened to all of the cues and all of the language, okay? So very, very minimal information. So last night they said, come downstairs at X time and we're going to do an exercise. All you're going to need is comfortable clothes and a blindfold. Okay, and they also told us to wear tennis shoes because they were being tricky. Okay, so they're giving us the instructions and they said the first thing that you're tricky, you say, huh? Jessie Lee doesn't like to trick people. She said that herself. Or did she say she likes to trick people? Hmm. 
day two, I tricked them even more. I tricked them even more, to be totally honest. We're going to go on a hike tomorrow, you know, prepare for like two hours. And look, I knew it wasn't two hours. And the smart thing to do would be ask leading questions, you know? So one person was really smart. And we said, if anybody asked throughout the entire day, how much longer? You have to say, we're almost there. Also, she mentioned a while ago, like with the two liters of water and the sunscreen and the bug spray, that's what they were told to bring on their walk. Or, well, is it a walk or a hike? Because I keep hearing different things. Straight into the sun for 10 miles on the side of the road. And Jesse even said she told them it's a two-hour walk. Brittany's like, nah, I knew it was only two hours. We're going to come back after dark. No, baby, you sleep on the beach for the night. Where we find out from the live recently, there were large bugs crawling all over you. So, so I hear you. Hashtag BA boss, babe going to do once you are blindfolded is you are going to take off of your socks you're going to or you're going to take off your shoes so we took off our shoes we took off our socks and they're like now we're going to go out in the street and you have to figure out this exercise together so we are walking barefoot and blindfolded in the streets of colombia okay first off when i shared that i was going to colombia I had some people, they're like, oh my gosh, you better be careful. I hope you don't get kidnapped. I hope you don't get trafficked. Oh my gosh, you better be careful here. You better be careful there. Oh, I've heard all these things about Columbia. And my question to you is if you had a physical, physical concern about my body being in Columbia, my question to you is, was that your experience when you went to Columbia? There's two things I want to touch on here. One, sure, there are some dangers in Columbia. There are some dangers in the United States. There are some danger. You know what I mean? Like, there are dangerous places and dangerous parts of every country. Like, let's say you're them and they went to L.A., but they were from another country. I wouldn't say go to Skid Row, right? You should know about Skid Row, not to go there. It depends on what you're doing, right? Some people go there. They give out food. They help, you know. But if you're going there for this, I would say mm, probably don't, right? So it's the same for Columbia. I'm sure there's places like that where... People shouldn't go, but you need to know that you shouldn't go there. It's about education. It's about educating yourself before you go. Let's be real. We don't want to say that Columbia is a bad place. I'm sure it's great vacationing there, especially when you know what you're doing, when you respect the locals, and when you just educate yourself on the country itself. Yeah, pretty straightforward. The second thing she says, my favorite thing that they've been saying this entire time, ever since this entire Columbia thing went down, they've been saying this, and I love it because I love. I just love hearing this illogical thought process of, you haven't been there, so how do you know it's dangerous? All right, um, I also haven't done heroin, but I'm pretty sure I know that it can be dangerous or is dangerous. I um, haven't <laughs> drank alcohol and drove, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that that can be dangerous, right? So there's also that thought process of like, um, you haven't been there, you don't know anything. No, you can know a place is dangerous before going to it. You can know something is dangerous before using it or taking it or whatever you want to say. Logically, you can know. It, this whole idea of you have to go and experience it to know that it's bad for you is like saying that you have to experience every single drug to be able to say that each one is bad for you, right? I can't say um, fentanyl is bad for me even though I haven't taken it right? No, I can because I know it is. Uh, I do think it's important to educate yourself before going to another country, no matter the country. Anywho, I just want to prove that that is like a fallacy to use that. Because if it wasn't your personal experience when you were in Colombia, how do you know that Colombia is not safe? Because you watched it on the news? Y'all are still believing the news? <laughs> you heard it from who? <laughs> And it's the same thing in your life and in your business. Like, oh, it's so lonely at the top. How do you know? You're at, you're at the top. You know it's lonely up there? Like, don't give me opinions and feedback on things you haven't actually experienced. We create this fear and we take in these opinions of other people and it stops us from doing things that we want to do. So many of you are not traveling, maybe because of the money, but you're also not traveling out of fear. You haven't left the country because you're scared. You're fearful of what other people have told you about other countries that they have never been to. Dude, it's just so good. Like, just imagine sitting here thinking this way. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, you know what? Colombia's not the most dangerous place in the world. Are there dangerous places in Colombia? 
Well, absolutely. We've, we've already talked about this, but Jesse Lee even said like, this was a place where people could get kidnapped. So we like had our two, whatever travel guys or whatever, stay up all night to make sure that didn't happen. I mean, the jokes write themselves at this point because the hypocrisy is just like wild. And we have to be totally honest. Are all places in Columbia, are they all dangerous? No. Can they become if you don't know what you're doing? Yeah, just like all places in the United States, they can become dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. I, I feel like that's a pretty straightforward thought process, but I guess not. If you have not been to Colombia, I love you and I understand your intentions, but don't tell me that I'm making a wrong decision or don't tell me I'm going to an unsafe place. If you have never been here, you don't know any more about this country than the news has told you. Listen, don't tell me cocaine's bad for me unless you've taken it yourself. Got it? I don't want to hear another word about cocaine being bad unless you take it yourself. Mm. Education, y'all. It really is just educating yourself. And we do this in every single area of our life, okay? So back to the story. We're blindfolded and uh, barefoot walking through the streets of Columbia. So here is the vision. We had to walk from our house and we slowly walked to another destination. They said, now the goal is for the person who is blindfolded to lead the person who is not blindfolded back to the house. So the person that wasn't blindfolded was not to lead us back home. We were to use all of our other very, very, very heightened senses and our memory to get us back to the house. How heightened are your senses, Brittany? <laughs> Do you have like incredible hearing? Can you hear a butterfly flap its slings like <laughs> I've been trying to make up something. It just keeps it's like, can you hear a woodpecker pecking from a mile away? No, Brittany. Your senses aren't just like heightened because you get wear a blindfold for one day or like for one hour. Like, sure, maybe a little, right? You're gonna have to hone in more on your ears and on your smells and whatever. But like you don't have like these wild heightened senses, like just because you're wearing a blindfold. Nah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just so funny. And by the way, I was wrong. They're, the person who wasn't blindfolded was not meant to lead them back. They had to do it themselves. So quite interesting. Their only job as the person guiding us was to make sure we did not get hit by a car. That we did not get ran over by a horse and buggy that is trotting down our street. Okay, that was the only goal, was for them to keep us safe. And they were not allowed to speak to us. So as you are blindfolded and you're trying to visually remember, like you're trying to visually walk yourself through the path. Like, okay, I walked out the front door of the house and I took a left. And on the next block, I took a right and then I walked about halfway through the block and then I took a left to go up into the park plaza. So you start having to listen to the sounds. Like we went through this debrief last night and it was all about, I heard the sounds. Like I knew I was at the street where I needed to turn left because I heard the live music that was on this side when we were walking there. I knew where to go because I was visually thinking of it. I could smell the smells of our street. I could hear the music that was on the corner. And I watched, I was blindfolded second. So I was guiding Miss Lindy Kiner. I was guiding her first. So we did hand signals where like this meant you need to step up or this meant you need to step down or like this, like a quick squeeze was like, there's kind of like some rough terrain. Okay. They don't necessarily have a like smooth sidewalks here y'all. Okay. So it's like, it's going to be a little bit bumpy, but you're safe. Um, but we, as people who were guiding, were not allowed to speak. They just had to use all of their senses and we were basically there to keep them from running into traffic. Okay. So that was the whole vision with that. If this sounds really cool to you, like I know maybe the shoe thing freaks you out. Okay. But there's a lesson in this too. I'm so excited to hear the lesson because I did know for business, you needed to walk somewhere a few blocks away, get blindfolded, take your shoes and socks off, and then walk back in a country that you've been in for maybe like two days, maybe. Oh, interesting. I wonder how that's going to help their MLM business. Any thoughts? Was because we were all so like, you want us to do what? You want me to take my sanitary socks and shoes off and walk in the street with a blindfold? You want me to do what? And so we had 
hyped up this huge obstacle. And then at the end of it, being barefoot was the least of our worries. We weren't even focused like, oh my God, I'm barefoot, I'm barefoot, I'm barefoot. We were like, okay, I can do this. I have to remember it's this way and it's this way. And I hear a horse and carriage over here and I hear the police coming here. Okay, I will tell you, <laughs> the police came because they were concerned that we were blindfolded leading people around. <laughs> yeah, that checks out. That checks out. That makes sense. But it was fine. Nobody got arrested. Um, but we were so focused on being present with our other senses that we were experiencing. We were feeling walls. We were feeling things. We were uh, holding the hands of our guides. We were listening to the sound. We were like smelling the smells of the streets. I know this sounds crazy, but smelling the smells of the streets. We were using all of our other senses. We were feeling things with our feet. We were like, okay, I know I'm close to the curb. How close am I? And we would touch a toe down to the street so we could see how close we were. Like our, uh, our other senses, senses were so heightened that every single person was able to get us back home. So a few things that I learned. Um, one of the huge lessons that I had is as soon as we got to the destination and they told us that our goal was for the blindfolded person to get back the, to the house, without a second thought, I said, I don't know where we are. I'm not good with directions. Valid. I See, mm, logic. That's a valid point. You don't know where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not good with directions. All right, well, like, mm, I get it if they chose to participate in this, but they didn't actually have a choice. If you sit there and you go, they choose their adults, blah, blah, blah. That tells me that you don't know how cults work. And listen, I understand. People don't. Some people don't and some people don't care. But you have to know that they didn't actually have a choice in this. And if they didn't do it, I can, I can assure you they would be shunned. I can assure you they would have so much crap thrown at them not literal but just because they didn't do this so without even trying to take a second and breathe and be present and focused and turn around and look and see we went this way and this way and this way we we're only like three blocks from the house instead of trying to problem solve i immediately said i'm not good at that i can't do that we do this in our businesses when an obstacle is presented to us, we self-identify as someone who's not good at that. Oh, I'm not good at live video. I don't know how to do that. Instead of seeking solutions, instead of thinking, okay, well, I've never done this before, but what are some things that I can do right now in the next 60 seconds that will set me up for better success? What steps do I need to take and move forward? You're telling me that there's no other way to learn that? There's no other way Jesse could have taught that than to make you take your shoes and socks off, throw a blindfold on, and walk back in a country you haven't spent much time in, in a town you probably really haven't been in very long. That's the only way Jesse could teach you was to have full control of you and make you do something like that. That's that's interesting to me. I think that's a weird take, Britt. I really do. In order to be successful with this task that is in front of us. So that was the first thing I immediately said. I don't know where we are. I'm not good at direction. I'm not whatever. So the immediate self-talk was like, you're not qualified to do this. This is going to be a challenge for you. So the second that I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, I have to, I have to look around and start figuring out. Which way do we go? Which way do we come from? Was it one turns, two turns? Was it one street, two streets, three streets? We do this in every single area of our life. So that was the first thing. The second thing was I was getting so focused on step by step by step and all of my senses and I was feeling the walls and I was feeling with my feet and I was listening to the sounds. I was so focused on exactly the task in front that I forgot where I was going. Okay, so I forgot that I was on this whole mission where I had to go three blocks and find the house. You're telling me that you were worried about stepping on stuff that could potentially hurt you and you, for you forgot? You're literally walking barefoot on public streets. I wouldn't even do that around where I live, in my area of my home, much less someplace that I don't know and haven't been to. You never know what could have happened. I mean, honestly, it could have been pretty bad. Honestly, Jessie's goal to have so much control over people that she makes the things that they do so dangerous 
to the point that Jessie's entire thing that I've noticed, that I've started to notice, is she just wants a good story. She doesn't care how dangerous it is. She doesn't care if she puts people in harm's way. She doesn't care if someone gets hurt, which, by the way, people have gotten hurt. Uh, she doesn't care. She cares about a good story. And if she can tell a good story to get people to listen up, that's all that matters to her. But if the story gets her in trouble, then, oh, it's a lie. It was just a story. No. No, it was true. But you would rather act as though your storytelling is a lie than it be true because it being true just makes you look even worse. Because you are. You put them in danger. You're their leader. You're supposed to respect them enough to keep them safe. But you choose not to. It tells me that she didn't care about being a good leader to these people. What it tells me is she wants full control over them and for people to feed her ego. I don't know. You tell me what you think below. So I had to physically stop my body. And I had to think, what have I already done? Have I turned on this street yet? Or is that still ahead of me? Have I walked down this sidewalk yet? Or is that still ahead of me? Have I walked all the way down this block or am I only halfway? So I had to stop getting so focused on the, the day, the DMOs. I had to stop focusing so much on the step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step DMOs and take a moment to pause and remember where I was going. Does this make sense? We do this in our businesses. We get so focused on checkbox, 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 check. Oh, I did it. I did the reel. I did the TikTok. I did the this. I did this. I did the live. I did this. I did this. That we forget why we're doing all of it. We forget where the hell we're trying to go. We forget who we're trying to impact. We forget the whole big vision. We forget all of the pixels and our vision gets blurry because we're so focused on check, 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 check. Is this making sense? Okay. I had, I had a lot of takeaways. But the third one that I want to share with you is actually, again, I said I was blindfolded second, which means I led... Lindy first. Um, and I also watched other people lead their people. Okay. So I watched the other, the other people that were across the street were, uh, it was a guy and a girl. It was Courtney and Mateo, but that doesn't really matter because you don't know who they are. Um, and so I was watching both the way he was coaching and also the way that she was finding her own way. And what I noticed about something that he did is I was trying to be very protective of Lindy. Like I didn't want her to run into anything. I didn't want her to like stub a toe. I didn't want her obviously like fall off the curb. I was being very protective to make sure she stayed safe. And Mateo, on the other hand, was letting Courtney stub her toe. Was letting her like not like crushing into things. We're all moving at a very, very slow pace. But he like kind of let her come belly to belly with a tree. He let her come like, he let her like wrap around a pole here. Like he was letting her like physically hit things at a very, very slow pace. It was very soft. It was very gentle. There were no injuries. Okay. But he was letting her feel the pain in order for her to build a deeper trust. What? Let, let's listen to what she said. There was no injury. There was no nothing. I mean, it was barely a blah, 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 you know, talking about how she wasn't hurt. Um, but then you said he let her feel the pain. So obviously there were a few things that she did get hurt by. Stubbing her toe? Uh, uh, ow. Uh, but why? Why? To, to trust herself more? There's nothing else you could do other than let this person walk barefoot in streets that she's not been in, uh, in a place that she has not, that she does not know, and uh, blindfold her and um, let her hit stuff? Is that what I'm hearing? And you think, you think that's normal. You think that on a business trip, that's totally normal. All right. Okay. That even through the pains, the bumps, the challenges, she will still find her way. And we do this when we lead people. We try to keep them so safe. We try to help them so much. We try to give them so many resources and so many trainings and answer all their questions and help them devise a plan and a DMOs and answer every single question in two seconds. We try to help them so much that we actually hold them back because when there is the tiniest of bumps, they crumble. When there's the tiniest of bumps, they crash. When there's the tiniest of bumps, they give up. They quit. Like, I can't do this. When you go away for five days and can't be plugged into your business, they're like, oh my God, I knew it. I knew you were going to leave. I knew it. I just knew I wasn't cut out for that. And they just spiral when you're not there for every single second of every single thing that they're learning. And so I actually learned a lot from watching other people um, 
coach and lead as well, which I thought there was just so many different takeaways that like before we stepped out into the challenge, the biggest mental block was that we were bare feet in the street. But as every single one of us went through the exercise, that was the least of our worries. That was the least of our challenges because we could feel the different textures of the sidewalk and know where we were. We could feel where we were at in the street. You can't feel where you're at on the street if you have tennis shoes on. So it was kind of like this. We're all like, oh, you want us to do what? Oh, gross. Bare feet on the street. Oh, this is that. Uh, uh. Like everyone was like, oh. there was a big gasp. Like the air was just sucked out of the room. They're like, take your shoes off. And we're like, oh, what? You know, so like your reaction to seeing my pictures was all of our initial reactions. But after going through the exercise, we realized we thought it was going to be this big, huge mountain obstacle. And it ended up being an anthill. So what obstacles are you looking at in your business that you're like, oh God, this is going to be so bad. This is terrible. This is the worst. There's no way I can do this. I don't, oh, I just can't do it. I don't, I, there's no way I can make it through this. I can't do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Start moving forward. The more that you move forward and the more that you stack your confidence chips, like I was stacking confidence both in myself and in my leader by just breathing question did jesse do it did jesse get blindfolded and do this herself take her shoes off and walk the streets or is it just you guys is it just y'all yeah that checks out my favorite part of all of this is how they try to tie it back to their mlm business you can't unless it's a cult now i, I get this idea of moving forward not being afraid to do something like you know in real world situations this could be pretty cool one, if your leader's done it before you, two, if you are able to give like an option of do you want to or not, yes or no. It's cool if you have informed consent. It's cool if your leader is a solid human and is not all about her ego. It's cool if this is something y'all came up with and thought it might be fun to do. What's not cool is not informed consent. What's not cool is knowing you have to do it no matter how you feel about it. That's coercion. And coercive persuasion is brainwashing, okay? That's what that is. It's so interesting watching her tie this back into her quote unquote business, like the MLM, right? Multi-level marketing, because like I said, all those things that would make it cool would be cool. You could probably could, but with MLMs, things are different. Multi-level marketing companies, are not like small businesses. They're not like other retail stuff. It, it's not like that. It's different, especially when it's not just about the products. It's more. It's about the community. It's about wealth. It's about all of this stuff. And the funny part is, it's all a lie. Like it is. It's just not true that you're going to have this big community that has your back. You may think so, but if you need to leave, or decide to leave or something happens and you have to stop, they're out of there. It's very rare that anyone sticks around. We know the whole idea with wealth, this idea that you're gonna make a bunch of money and be able to live your dream life and all of that, that's also a lie. How do we know? Have you looked at an income disclosure statement? The multi-level marketing business structure is made for 1% to thrive and 99% to fail. It's made for that. When I hear people talk about self-growth in an MLM or uh, doing things or reading things to grow yourself in this MLM to make you better, I think indoctrination. Because it's not about you and your life and everyday life. It really isn't. It's about this MLM. It's about multi-level marketing and how you can make more money from your, for your upline. It's about how you can be better and think less. This is all thought stopping stuff. What she is doing is trying to persuade people to stop thinking and start doing instead. While I do think that's important in certain situations, this is not one of those. I do not think, especially when it comes to business, that you should stop thinking and start doing. I, I'm sorry, I just don't. I think that you have to crunch the numbers. I think that you have to think this through. I think you have to see what's going to be better for your business through this or that. You have to think it through and they are persuading you to stop thinking it through why so you don't quit so you don't actually crunch the numbers so you don't sit back and go oh this isn't making me money oh i'm not ranking up 
Oh, I'm spending more than I'm profiting. Oh, I'm actually spending less time with my family than I was before. Oh, I get on all these calls, do all these Zooms, do all of this, and I'm actually not getting paid at all unless a product is sold by me or someone below me. Oh, I'm working for free. They don't want you to get there. It's, it's thought stopping techniques. Let me know what you think below about that. And being present and being focused. Like I can do this. I can figure this out. I can do this. This is something that I can do. I can figure this out. I may have to go a little slower than I would like to go, but I can do this. I can feel my way. I can use all of the resources that I already have. Y'all, nobody gave me a sense of smell. I already had it before I was blindfolded. Nobody gave me my auditory senses last night. I already had them. I just wasn't using my awareness. I wasn't using the tools and resources I already had available. So you are saying that some people don't have those available though, right? You are saying some people, you are saying not everyone has the ability to, right? Because not everyone has the ability to smell. My grandfather does not. Not everyone has the ability to hear. I, I know people who are blind because not everyone has the ability. Not everyone was born with hearing. So what I hear you admitting is that not everyone, and honestly, a lot of people, won't ever be able to be successful because they don't have the tools. Also, can you like bring it down a notch? Because my head is starting to hurt. I think it's because of the very, very quiet and then very, very loud talking. Like it is making my head ring and I, I can't. Britt, I need you to take a deep breath and chill out. At a level that I should be using them on a daily basis in order to move myself, my life, my business, my family closer to my goals and my dreams. Is this all making sense? Like this, this exercise, it literally took, the exercise probably took like 20 minutes. They had mapped out 40 minutes for the whole thing and it took maybe 20 because we each led there and back, there and back. And so there was just so many lessons in that of what tools and resources do you already have access to that you're not utilizing because somebody else is feeding you. Somebody else is giving them to you. Somebody else is there to give you all the things. So you don't even look for the answers because you know if you go ask Sally, she'll deliver them to you. So you don't even try to remember the way home because you know if you're following Sasha and Mateo, they know the way home. Question. That how does that work in with this whole Jessie and her team situation of she created this entire new system and made you purchase it and it's in and from my what I heard you buy it monthly and apparently everything uh and their mom is supposed to be there everything is supposed to be there everything that they need but you purchase it and pay for it monthly so how does that correlate with your team right? If everything's on there and they can go look for it for themselves, how does this correlate? It doesn't. It literally doesn't. Also, there's nothing better than someone who thinks they nailed the sh pause and look at you. You know what I mean? Just like that. <laughs> Serious as can be. Just like they can rock the stage. Oh, I love watching her. So I had no awareness of the things around me, of what direction we were going, of where we were going, of the things on the street. Like I was looking at like, oh, that's cute. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's whatever. But I wasn't like collecting the whole vision. So sometimes we paralyze ourselves from stepping into our own greatness because we rely heavily on other people. We know so-and-so will give us the answer. We know so-and-so will help us. We know that all of these people will do the hard work for us. If you can't find something, you're like, oh, I don't know where my shorts are. Okay, first off, you got to move your feet to find something. But there's a lot of husbands out there that know if they ask their wife, have you seen my wallet? She will get up and do the work to go find the wallet. That's a fair point. I actually like what she said about that. Husbands, get your ass up. Go get the wallet. All right. BA boss babe, hashtag BA boss babe, I'm right there with you. Something I will say though is, hmm, I think I know a little bit about Jessie and her downline and how, you know, Jessie will pick a favorite. This is alleged. How Jessie will pick a favorite, uh huh, uh huh, and place people under them so that they rank up. Hmm. I wonder how Rindy ranked up to her level in six weeks that got her on this trip. 
Mm. This is so interesting to me. It blows my mind, honestly. And I love watching them talk about it because you just see what Jesse's doing to them. Now, let me be very clear. I don't love that she's, you know, obviously taking control over them, kind of making them go wild. I don't love that. What I love is how we can take this and go, look at this, see what's happening, poke holes in what they're saying and show why they're saying it. It's actually really sad that Jesse's done this to them, but it's just going to get worse from here. So if you're watching and you're a quote unquote survivor that y'all like to joke about when in reality you are, I'm just saying, take a step back. Please think, please think, please. Instead of taking a second to stop and think, where can I visualize myself having my wallet at last? Because he knows someone else will do the work for him. But that holds him back. I know this is a very small example, but it holds him back from being able to have this whole new level of awareness. Like if I knew that if I lost my wallet, there was no one in the world that would help me find it. You bet your backside I would be more vigilant and more aware and more intentional with every single step that I take. So that's my final lesson to you. I hope y'all uh, got some value from that. I hope y'all took some notes. If y'all got some value, do me a favor. All that I ask is that you share this with a friend who needs this. But I gotta go. I cannot be late. I have to be downstairs ready to walk out the door in four minutes, okay? We don't do late. We're sticking to the time blocks, okay? So I love you guys so, so much. Thank you, Wendy and Alexis and Sharon and Emily and Sarah and Jay and Kristen for hopping on. And hey, bye. Hashtag BA boss, babe. Thoughts? Okay, so this is that in between time, like I said, between the blindfolded barefoot thing and then the hike slash walk, whatever. What? I mean, come on, let's be for real. It is, it really is truly incredible and not in an incredible, awesome way, but like just extraordinary to watch this go down and I promise my next video will likely not be about this and I promise I'm not going to talk about this forever but I think that it is so important too and I think that Jessie Lee's actually getting people calling her out for this stuff by in her life saying hey like that's never okay like this is never okay and it's not just by us right it's not just by people in who are anti-MLM or anti-scam or whatever it's people who don't even care about that world and go, oh, that's messed up. Because generally, it is. It's just wrong in so many ways. And I, if you're sitting here going, oh, they all choose to do it. it, they allow it to happen. Please just take a moment, look into cults. Please look into them. Please learn more about them. It's not what you think it is, I can assure you, unless you think that it is like a wild coercive persuasion, which is what brainwashing is, mind game thing, then yeah, it absolutely is. And in this case, it's not just mental and emotional, it's physical, which brings it to another level, right? This is another level. She went too far the moment that she hit mental and even further with emotional. Now, physical, I want to hear your thoughts on this because I think a lot of people have a lot of thoughts and uh, I think it's important to share those thoughts because I'm not perfect and I probably missed something and y'all, a lot of y'all are smarter than me so I want to hear what you think. I also appreciate you watching. So uh, if you want to watch my other Britney videos, I will try to link them up here. If not, you can probably just type in Julie Jo. BA boss babe and honestly I think a few will pop up if you have any questions they might be answered in the description and if you have questions or you if you have content you want me to react, react to look at whatever email me thanks so much I hope you have a wonderful day I'll see you next time bye I don't care about what has been I only care about your